Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Director Watch, an awards watch podcast that attempts to get inside the mind of cinema's greatest auteurs, explore what drives them, and maybe we go on a few unrelated tangents along the way. I'm Ryan McQuaid, the executive editor here at Awards Watch, and joining me as always is my co host, Jay Ledbetter. And today we're talking about a film about a, a, a soldier, a veteran who has been completely consumed by his service and is trying to find his purpose in life. That's right. We're talking about born on the 4th of July. No, Jake, um, I'm going to stop you there. Okay. I, I, that's a different series, a series that we haven't even started. Oh, um, and that would be an Oliver Stone series. We're not in an Oliver Stone series. We're in a William freaking series. Is there a movie that's kind of similar to that? Oh, I guess like, okay, somebody who's sort of like brainwashed by the military. Oh, The Hunted. We're talking about yeah, The Hunted. There you go, yeah, buddy. Obviously, obviously. Fortunately, I watched that this weekend as well. So we'll talk about that one. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. How you been, bud? I've been great, man. I mean, it's it's we're, we're getting down to the the final freaking episodes here. This yeah. is it's crazy. We're doing we're doing so much freaking talk over the last couple of weeks. We've been um for a little behind the scenes, we're banking up these bad boys. We've been banking yeah. them up. Take it to the bank, and uh, we've been making deposits left and right. Uh, so we're a little bit ahead of when this is going to be releasing, but uh, we're a little, little, I guess, yeah, ahead, right? Is that how you say it? Ahead, not yeah, behind. I mean, this not is, behind. I so guess there we go. By the time this gets released, will the will the Oscars have happened for twenty twenty? I don't think so. I think twenty twenty three Oscars. Like, so we're like, like right before. The, we're like on the eve of it. I yeah. think. Hang on. Hang on. Let me double might check. Be just a, might, might, might be just a few days before. Yeah, but, we're, like a, uh, we're like a week before. Okay. All right. So yeah. everybody is just eagerly anticipating the 2023 Oscars. Is that what you call them? The 2023 Oscars? 2024. Even though it's 2023 movies? Well, the Oscars are happening in 2024. I know, but is that how you refer to them? See, this is the controversy. See, this is why this is what you're asking if the right questions. If I'm talking about the pulp fish... Pulp Fiction Oscars. I'm talking about the 1994 Oscars. I mean, you're talking about the movies in '94 for sure, but the ceremony but took place in '95. Them, but 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 how how what is the common way when to... we write down the articles? Uh huh. It's the it's the 2000. So you're saying in when the ceremony takes place, Pulp Fiction lost the 1995 Oscar to Forrest Gump. Correct. I think that's the wrong way to do it. I understand. This is, th listen, I am agnostic when it comes to any of this. I, we try, we almost thought about a little inside baseball here for everybody up top. We, we thought about switching because that makes uh -huh. sense. Do some people do it differently? Even the Academy doesn't know what the hell they're doing because mm -hmm. they say on their website that they're the way that you think it, which is the film year. But then when you go to, outside the Dolby theater in Hollywood, they, which the Academy runs and everything, mm -hmm. uh, they, they put the, the, the year the ceremony was at. So the, even they're at odds about it. Interesting. Yeah. It's, it's weird. So you think it should just be the film year mentally. I just think of it as the, the year the films were released. Yeah. See, I think of it as the, it's like sports where it is the 20, 2003, 2000 or like the 2023 2024 season does that make so, sense i mean that's you're just getting complicated here i mean that's what they do with basketball basketball it's it, they when they crown a champion on t-shirts yeah but in the, basketball they crown the champion in like june yes so. and we're crowning the champion in in march but yeah, we started this gotten, back in, it's gotten so late i'm telling i'm just telling you how it is buddy it's just i <sighs> know it's it's it, it's it doesn't make any sense i just i just kind of think of when the movie was released that's I know. when i that that's how i when did the season the but when did the season start it started in 23 and when did it end in 24 yeah i guess but every movie has to come out in 23 to correct. be eligible for the 24 Oscars. correct correct so it's really the season ended in 23 you're right and then it overflowed into 24 it's, but it's continued because the oscar race this is, is in 24 this is a great debate that i don't think we're going to settle on an episode <laughs> about the hunted <laughs> well, i'm just i'm just you asked you brought this upon yourself i did i mean i i, I will i i i think 
I, I don't think I can help myself. I, I think I'll refer to the Oscars as the year that the movies came. If out. you go I on the sure. Academy's website right now, it's the 2024 uh-huh. Oscars. It's it's tough. I don't agree. I don't know if I don't know if that's right. I just you know what I end up calling it the 96th annual Academy Awards. The that? American Beauty won the Oscar the the what year Oscars? They won in 2000. It's 1999 though. I know. It's when the ceremony is. Yeah. It's when guess. they're handing out. They're not handing out the Oscars in December 31st. They're handing the Oscars out when the next year. It's interesting. It's a tough it's, one. It's a tough it's one. A tough one. We'll see we'll how it works. Bo- we'll have a whole bonus episode on that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what the listeners want to hear. This rant for another 45 to two hours. I can do know? it. I, I bet you could. I bet you could, buddy. Um, Jay, per tradition, yeah. here at uh, at Director Watch during this series and various other series that we'll do in the future, uh, we like to fill in the blanks. We like to to uh, figure out what uh, movies that William Freakin was talking about or making, or all that in between, between our last movie, which was Blue Chips, and The Hunted. Yeah, I would think it was three movies. There in are, between? Or, yeah, well, there's two theatrical and one sort Television. of seminal cable movie. Yes. Yeah. Okay. A, a, I have seen... Time would you like to know this, Jay? I would love. I saw two of these. Okay. To talk with you about this week. I'm going to guess they were Rules of Engagement and 12 Angry Men. That is correct. You did not watch Jade. I did not watch Jade, but I have been dying to hear your thoughts on jade i have been i didn't look on letterbox i didn't even look the only thing i saw was your tweet about it uh-huh. which you said essentially just so that you all know i watch jade i have and seen jade i have seen jade. that is a thing that has now happened in my life in my life so jay floor is yours my great friend yeah talk about jade yeah, so so post uh, Blue Chips, he he actually made this TV movie called Jailbreakers, which like just doesn't exist. I couldn't even figure out a way to watch it. Um, you you tried. I honestly I didn't really try that hard to watch. Oh, Jay, I, I don't. I, I I I know very very unlikely. I think but, you let down the audience. So you need to apologize to the audience. I'm so. sorry to the audience that came out in 1994, the same year that Blue Chips came out. But in 1995, he made Jade, mm. and Jade was in a movie theory a kind of big deal. It was written by Joe Esterhaus, who was, he was the basic instinct guy, the showgirls guy. He was the flash dance guy. He was the big, sexy thriller guy of the late eighties into the nineties. He was the highest paid screenwriter in the world at the time. And so it seems like Jade absolute home run, except here's the thing bad, Uh, not a, not a good film. It uh, it stars David Caruso and Linda Fiorentino. I'll say this. Linda Fiorentino looks spectacular in the film. Um, so there's that. But it really is just a film that just it's. And Ryan, you know me. I love pulpy junk. But this goes even a degree too far to me. And it is supposed to be this sexy thriller. But to me, it is mm. utterly unsexy. And. Mm. I think most disappointingly, the filmmaking is pretty pedestrian. No. I think the pacing is kind of disastrous. It's even at, and I watched the, um, I watched the director's cut, which is a little bit longer than the theatrical cut. But even then, the pacing is off. The performances are super stiff. I just think this really doesn't work at all. And here's the interesting thing as I was doing my research. Uh, reading Friedkin's memoir, he says that the car chase in Jade is the best car chase he has ever directed. He is, he is beyond wrong. Like th- th- there were a few worse opinions than this being Friedkin's best car chase, but it's um, it's one of those things where Friedkin he he wanted to continue to push buttons, but he's kind of he's in this weird fallow period where he pushes buttons and it feels like he's just pushing buttons for the sake of pushing buttons. 
And I think this is one of the low points of his career. Um, it's it's bad. It's it's not good. It's not good. That is, so um, that's kind of you know that's that. Well, remember you got to take everything Big Willie says uh, with a uh, the grain of salt. You do. It's kind of it's kind of him just being like, look. I mean, I know this movie isn't great, but I think it's him trying to justify it in his filmography. Its existence. A bit. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that's, I mean, that's okay. You know, there's some, there's some directors, you know, talked about over the years where they're like, yeah, that movie, fuck it, burn, burn it. I don't want it to exist yeah. on my resume, David Lynch, Dune. Uh, but, you know. No, I don't think he feels that way. I, I definitely, he, he definitely doesn't talk about this movie glowingly. He's not like, no. this is one of my great films. But to say that. To say, he claims on. it was like on a technical level his greatest achievement as far as a car chase, which I just don't think is true. I mean, I haven't seen. It. I think it's partly not true because nobody was at the risk of dying in this car chase. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also think so there's I, that. I also think too, like when you see the long list of uh, car chase scenes, no one's ever referring to Jade. No, you know? I mean it is it is so funny at, at this point in his career. If he was like, oh, I'm gonna make a if, if they were like, oh, I want you to remake fried green tomatoes, they'd be like, oh, but put a car chase in it because you're William Friedkin. Yeah. You know, that that was that was like the one thing that would get his movies made. Did you? Uh, but, but it just doesn't really work in this one. Fried green tomatoes. Okay. Um, I don't know. Is that a, do you like that movie? I've never seen it. Never seen it? No, but I just assume if he remade that one, if you never seen fried to, green tomatoes? No. Like steel magnolias? Have you seen that one? No. Mystic Pizza? Yes, I've seen Mystic Pizza. Okay. Those are like the Baby staple Ju- of like... Baby Julia. Baby Julia, yeah. Those are like staple movies for like moms. Yeah, I'm yeah. not a mom, so... Well, I mean, yeah, but Allie Disney makes you watch those. Hocus Pocus every year. Well, Hocus Pocus is a millennial want... classic. Hocus Pocus is An a old scam. millennial classic. That's a scam. That's a scam movie. Hocus Pocus 2, though. Don't even start because I know you do not like that movie. A, f- a felony. A felony. <laughs> so let's talk about Friedkin's next movie, which is 12 Angry Men, which you have seen, correct? Yes, 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 yes. And so let's talk about I think it's good. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, I mean, it's not as good as uh, Lumet's, obviously. I did use this as an excuse to re watch Lumet's, which I've not seen in a long time. What a masterpiece. Masterpiece. Just. I mean, it's one of the greatest debuts of all time. A powder kick. Just absolute of tension. It's just, so, I was know. just shocked by how cinematic that thing is. It, yeah. It's, it, you know, well, this Friedkin, is some... I think, wisely takes yeah. a more documentarian approach to his film. I think it's actually a good, I mean, well, we're going to talk about it. How this motherfucker is just like, he his, he loves his documentary style shit. He really yeah, I mean, that's, fucking, that's, 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 that's his most thing. of his career. Yeah. yeah. I th- there's another trend that we'll talk about here in a little but bit. But it just gets interesting when we get into the 90s and the 2000s where that is pretty kind of out of vogue and he still tries to keep it going. I think the the he certainly the, does it in this in this film. I think also the racial dynamic of the of the the jury being Oh yeah, him uh, making yeah. a more diverse jury I think is a great yeah. decision. I think it's wonderful. I think and especially given the, the time cast rocks. Yeah. Like Gordon B Vance like oh Gandolfini. Gandolf- Gandolfini. Man, I talk about a guy I miss. But lemon. I mean, lemon, lemon rules. Lemon rules. I think George C. Scott is fantastic. Oh, he's so good. Yeah, it's it's a great, great just. I mean, if you if anyone was gonna follow in the footsteps of a master's masterpiece, because those are that's like one of the, the four best movies that Lamed ever did for me. It's it's that it's network. I, I agree. Dark day I'll afternoon. Ne- I'll never watch network, unfortunately. <laughs> Dark day afternoon, and uh, and uh, the verdict. Those are the four for me. Yeah, I mean, have you seen I, the verdict? I haven't seen the verdict. You haven't seen the verdict? No. Talk about I mean, a movie. I need to. I need to go talk, on a Lumet round. Talk about a movie you would fucking love. You think so? Oh. oh. Well, it is a uh, the the other thing too is this is kind of the yeah. start of uh, that's a movie made for Jay. courtroom drama, yeah, guy, because those movies can be made for cheap. They can be, and he starts he starts kind of 
doing a little bit more of that and leaning towards that towards the latter part of his life. Some more smaller scale things, I think. Um, yes. But uh, but with a lot of shit to say. And, yeah. um, and I, but, I, I think his 12 Angry Men is a very effective movie. I think it's a worthy remake. I think we'll we'll talk about it probably more in the context of it, too, when we talk about K-Mutiny in a couple of weeks, too. Sure, sure. Um, because I think that there's there's really interesting parallels in the idea of him remaking uh, essentially like classics, um, you know, and, and how he's, he's kind of right there with them. I mean, like you're, you were mentioning it, I guess I can mention this part a little bit, Jay, is that like the thing about 12 angry men is it's, it's the problem with a lot of these movies nowadays that are single location. They don't feel cinematic. They don't feel the ur- You don't feel the urgency. You feel that a component of something is missing and yeah. Lamette doesn't do that. Like he doesn't feel like that. And I know, I think Freakin's able to capture that really, yeah, really to effectively. a slightly lesser extent. Freakin yeah. totally does that. Yeah. But not to that same extent as Lamette, but better than the average no. director that's doing Lumet, it today. This movie feels like there's a bomb in the room <laughs> and there is it literally, I mean, it, it, it goes off in, in the final five, 10 minutes. Yeah. Later. I mean, and Fre- Freakin's is great. George C. Scott does a great kind of final monologue as juror number three. It's not the greatest. Do you think it's the greatest debut of all time? Lumet's? I mean, God, there's Citizen Kane just kind I of sitting right Citizen there. Right as there. The, I was, as the I was just trying fighters. to get you in a trap about you know, that. No, I mean, you it, know, it's, the, the, it's when we, up there. We talked about it on the main show last year when we did uh, Top 5 Debuts. And what was so crazy was it's like, okay, I'll put on Citizen Kane. Let me rewatch Citizen Kane. And, you know, all right, let me see if it's, you know, I hadn't seen it in a while. That movie's fucking masterpiece like that that you know no, it's I, kind get, of, it's, I get it's, it. it's interesting it, it's one of those movies where you're like i mean this movie come on over, it's overpraised right like it's not like the greatest film of all time and then you watch it like ah, maybe this is the greatest, greatest film, film of all, of all time, time. <laughs> I, I don't know it's like that and like when i feel the same way with vertigo because i'm like oh okay sure everyone's just gonna tell me this is the best hitchcock and i'm like oh yeah this yeah this is the best this is the best hitchcock. <laughs> so i get yeah. it all right well, then he had one more, right? Rules of Engagement. Which you've also seen, right? Yes. This movie's wild. This movie is... <laughs> I almost feel like we should have maybe reviewed this, and we could talk about this as long as you want. This movie is fucking insane. Do you want to set it up, what it is, essentially? Yeah, I mean, it's it's another... It's interesting. Another it is courtroom. mostly a courtroom drama, although it has a pretty incredible like 20 minute war sequence in it, which is really well staged. I think really well done. Yeah. But it is mostly a film about um, deciding whether or not it's kind of a Rashomon esque story of did this commanding officer or did he not order his soldiers to fire on an unarmed crowd? Mm -hmm. Um, and it, and it kind of turns into this jury where the the man who is defending the commanding officer who is played by Samuel L. Jackson, the, uh, the, the lawyer is played by Tommy Lee Jones, who we're going to talk about a lot today. Hell yeah. But he actually, he was saved in Vietnam. It's like his best friend. Yeah. He, he has become sort of his best friend over the years because during Vietnam, Samuel L. Jackson shot dead an unarmed Vietnamese officer to yeah. save Tommy Lee Jones's life, or at least not, not necessarily to save his life, but as a way of ending uh, um, a, a, a battle in, in Vietnam. Yeah. And so he sort of has this history that you're always thinking about in the back of your mind. And th- this film, when it was released was scrutinized for being very, insensitive it, yeah which i totally understand i mean the whole time you're thinking that this guy i know they're trying to make you think that maybe he didn't fire on an unar- unarmed crowd right did you ever think he didn't fire on an unarmed crowd I oh didn't. no i i think he totally did it like i was like like i mean it's the way that when samuel L. jackson plays the character it's the way that they explain the evidence their only their only thing that Tommy Lee Jones has in this whole case. And it's, and it's rightfully so. Cause I mean, the government's just as corrupt as anybody else here. And, uh, right. and Bruce Greenwood 
fucking rules. Well, that is the thing. There, there's kind of there, there's kind of like, uh, you know, yeah, he did something bad, but the government is trying to use him as a pawn to mm -hmm. pass everything on to. But you're like, yeah, but they're both bad. Yeah, right? it's like no, no one looks good here. But the movie know? is kind of going for this lesser of two evils thing. Yeah, and it's like no, 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 no. Like everybody here is culpable in the mistakes that have been made like no yeah. one's no one's a hero the only one that's really I, mean, I wouldn't even know if tommy lee jones is even a hero in this thing like it because no no there. no nobody nobody is at all no but, and i, but I actually is, but the I thing actually, is yeah. Yeah. it's pretty good courtroom drama it's pretty good i it's mean like a pretty compelling extremely watchable movie yeah it's it's and then at the end of the film there is a <laughs> It's it's the okay, final the it. final scene yeah. of this movie. It is it's, absolutely insane. It is the most bonkers thing I've seen in a while. It's, it's, it's set it up, set it up. Like, all it's right, okay. so let's there, talk about is, it. Why not? This movie's been a, out twenty there years. There is a whatever. former Vietnamese <laughs> soldier who Wild. fought against Samuel L. Jackson and Tommy Lee Jones's battalion in Vietnam, mm -hmm. um, and he testifies against Samuel L. Jackson. And then at the end of the film, when Samuel L. Jackson is deemed innocent of all crimes, the Vietnamese soldier stands outside and salutes the man who murdered his unarmed commanding officer. Mm -hmm. And then Samuel L. Jackson salutes him back as if it is some sort of like, all is fair in war. Like I, I, I res I don't even know what what is the point of that moment is is it really just <laughs> look in that moment we were given instructions and we followed them and therefore we are equals is that what they're saying I think I mean I mean I interpreted it as yeah I mean the the idea of like we both have been cogs in the machine of our of our countries and spun out to be essentially linchpins for our higher ups mistakes like that's kind of how the film wants to present it yeah and then but he does a much better job in a movie called the hunted, hunted. addressing those exact no, I same agree. ideas but yeah. that's the thing is it's baffling because it's interested about this because it's like the hunted yeah. it's it's this movie does it's essentially asking the questions that like a movie like a, a not a good movie either in my opinion the deer hunter asks about like, i don't love the, the deer hunter either the I'm culpability said that yeah yeah I, I i i stand by what i say i think it's I, okay i think it's too long and kind of like like it, i don't know it's not that good Chimino. Um, we'll talk about it on our chimino series Whenever the hell that is, uh, another man responsible for <laughs> another man responsible big time for uh, the uh, the nineteen eighties, right? Uh, Heaven's Gate. Yeah. One day we've got to talk about Heaven's Gate. I feel like that's a movie we have. Well, to we got to do Shamino then. Yeah, I know, but like pretty what short, pretty short filmography. That's true. I mean, because he destroyed Hollywood. We could squeeze uh, that in. We could squeeze it in somewhere. That would actually be kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, look at us brainstorming on the show. Back to the point. The point is, is that if you want to make this this point, these are not the characters to fucking do it with. This is so irresponsible to like think that this is like a this is like a hey, uh, I know he did some horrible shit to you guys, and uh, yeah. the moral ambiguity. There's no moral ambiguity at all to those scenes. Uh, but yeah, if you can get me off on this trial, that'd be really great. You know what I mean? And he was Friedkin was like, also the idea of Guy Pierce bringing this movie. Guy Pierce bringing that witness in. Yeah. Fucking insane. That would not, Guy that, Pierce kind of good though. Uh, he's fine. I actually think all the performances are pretty good. What was so weird was seeing Ben Kingsley in here for a scene. That is true. That, that was that the was, fucking wildest he probably, thing. He like, probably was one of the highest paid actors on the movie. Yeah, I mean, like, dude, dude, I'm like, wait, he he had, had I think he had an Oscar nom around this time for House of Sand and Fog. It's like, it's been Kingsley. He's a very well known actor. He's coming in for one scene. It all of the, very, very but, weird. But the thing about this movie is all of the like superficial parts of it are good. 
No, like the Greenwood stuff with Jones and like the the cover as up a, stuff. Like as a good. thriller and as a war movie, it's very good. As a almost uh, like yeah, political thriller. Is that what you're trying to say? Like like the behind as the scenes a stuff. Yeah, piece of entertainment. It is it's, very compelling. As a piece of commentary, it's atrocious. It is. <laughs> It is something. It's, it is. It is something. It's. It is also a little long. It is a movie worthy of conversation. It's a little long, though, that. Jay. It's, it's, it's a little long. I, I agree. With long that. and and long in the tooth. Like I get what you're trying to say in here, and that's why I think the movie we're going to talk about today is the perfect length to talk about all the issues. That's why. And, a, that's and, like a cool ninety. This is when I saw that this was ninety minutes. By the way, you ever seen the hundred? Never seen it before this watch. Never seen it either. Okay. When I put this thing on HBO Max. HBO Max. Okay. I sat there and I went, this is 90 minutes. Fuck yeah, let's go. I was like, I was yeah. right there from the beginning. I was like, this is 90 minutes long. This movie is directed by William Freakin. So let me. So it essentially, so let me, hang on. Let me set it yeah. up. Hang on. Calm down. Calm down. Let me set it up for the audience. Okay. I'll let you set it up. Tommy Lee Jones. So if I can just say one thing before you do the plot description. Benicio Del Toro. Okay. No, you can keep going. Okay. I was just well, no, trying you, to annoy you. Oh, you're just trying to annoy me. I was going to mm -hmm. just ignore you. An FBI deep woods tracker. Didn't know that that was a thing. Attempted to capture a trained assassin who, he may, who has made a sport out of hunting people. He also has like a loose connection with them and everything too. Jay, he's been working a lot with Tommy Lee Jones in this era freaking tlj this is his second attempt to work with tommy lee jones yeah benicio right after the oscar win essentially yeah benicio and coming off the heels of like winning peak traffic. benicio yeah he's he's like i won the oscar and then and then i'm doing the hunted with tommy lee jones and william freaking 90 minutes not the best well-received movie at the time not um not well-reviewed uh, not necessarily a a big film at the at the box office. Uh, kind of a fifty five million dollar budget only made forty six million dollars. Jay, but it's been a movie that has been once again like many other films in Freakin's filmography. It's been reevaluated, and it's been much discussed as a really good movie uh, that people uh, should catch. And I think it's a good movie to just kind of pop on. A streaming service like this and see yeah. what it's all about so jay thoughts on the hunted yeah this movie kind of rocks i was um i'm gonna i'm they, gonna stop they, you there uh -huh. i agree this movie fucking rolls okay, okay. anyway just um, keep going well so so let me just ask you this because this was a film originally i had laid out the schedule for our william freedom series oh you're doing this not it did not include this movie. I didn't realize you hadn't seen it before. So why did you put this one on the list? Cool poster. Cool poster. Yeah, I mean, okay. no. Well, <laughs> I feel like we had to talk about one of the the Tommy Lee Jones films from this era. Because sure. this is our peak, like sort of sort of peak era. I, th I thought the Benicio angle sounded much better than the courtroom drama we were already talking about mm -hmm. a courtroom drama with this, with, uh, this at at one point seems like it's going to become a courtroom drama and then does not so close it was like yeah you're like steps close to it right and, and then, then was, there was nope, like he's gonna escape out of <laughs> a police truck and then so i was just like okay well let's, fuck it let's watch it let's put it on the list and i felt it was that one and i felt that i had seen it before so I was like, oh, maybe I had seen it before, maybe I hadn't. And then I, as I was watching, I was like, no, I've never seen this movie before. And then I realized my wife had seen this before. And so oh. she was like, oh, is that The Hunted? As I'm like, I was about to watch it. I was like, yeah, you seen this? And she went, yeah, that movie's great. Get to the last 30 minutes, you're going to be on the edge of your seat. I was like, you want to just watch it with me? She's like, yeah, sure, I'll watch it with you. And I got her roped in on this one and uh wow this movie is a blast why it don't is. we talk about this movie more it's great it's uh it's interesting yeah it is uh i've been writing a high from it 
the last five days. You know, calling it a blast is yeah. maybe well, not. I, I, I was really loving it. I was loving it. Engaging with the real darkness of it. I understand what you're there saying. Is a there. Lot of that. I understand what you're saying there, and I respect it, and I agree. But also, this movie rules, and I had an absolute enjoyable time in my house. I was sitting there you? going, this is great. I was like, I couldn't believe how grisly and gruesome yeah. and it's nasty. dark this thing it is. It is lean and mean. Yes, and I was... That's what I love about it. I love yeah, that it I is a mean fucking movie. Anyway, sorry, Jack. This might be his best post new Hollywood movie. Is that possible? Like, what's new Hollywood? Is that like? Well, I guess you've got to live and die in L.A. I was going to say post new Hollywood. Yeah, I was gonna, so let's was call gonna, it his slowly roll post to live and die in L.A. In LA. <laughs> is that? Like, I mean, like a, I mean, have you done all the watches already? Yeah. Okay. He's that's 35 years of movies. Yeah, I would Plus, say so. Yeah. I I I think that is the case. And I give this I give this, I give this four stars. I give this a four. I give this a four. This thing's good. Did I give it a four? This this is a ripper. I mean it is it is very much in the vein of some of those great lean 90s action movies that you know I, what I was very very much you know what i was thinking of i was thinking a lot of the fugitive as i was watching it definitely i mean the tommy lee of it all i, I mean the I tommy lee of it all the that. the sort of on the run angle everything but i was like it was like oh so this is like the the anti-fugitive because like a great chase movie because you're kind also, of it's still sort of it's not even the anti-fugitive movie the fugitive is kind of the guy you're rooting for in this movie but also in this movie, the fugitive is a brutal murderer. Well, I, that's the so thing. in that like, way, it is kind of the anti fugitive. Well, yeah, was, that's what I was going to say. It's like in that movie, I'm clearly rooting for Tommy Lee Jones. In this movie, I'm, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Harrison Ford. In this movie, in a little bit of Tommy Lee Jones, too, he's he's kind of likable in that movie as well. Um, in this movie, I don't think these guys are likable at all. I mean, like, it's kind of like, who are you supposed to root for? I'm, yeah. I, I'll be honest, I like I'm the, rooting for Benicio. I mean, me too. That, I mean, like I'm sitting there going, like, and he's he's perfect in this movie. This is a he's perfect. Great. Do you know the, the behind the scenes drama of this thing? I know you've read up on it, so I would like you to tell me because I I was kind of I'm like knowing Jay, he's probably got a book about it. It's probably did Fincher. I meant Fincher. Did freaking talk about it in his book. He did talk about it, not a ton, mm. but the biggest thing was that uh, Benicio broke his wrist. And interesting when, when Benicio broke his wrist as they were almost done shooting, it caused a, uh, six month delay. They had just stopped production for six months. No wonder the movie costs so much because it yeah. doesn't seem like it should. No, again, it's a, it's a pretty lean movie, but, uh, $50 million movie for like a, a 90 million like chase movie. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I, I think this movie has a great energy to it. I, I think it has, um i i think it's just again so lean and efficient is how i would kind of describe this movie and the way that it builds that relationship i'll tell you what movie i was thinking of and it's kind of just because this movie is top of mind i was thinking about oppenheimer because what you have here when you're talking about tommy right. Jones versus benicio del toro in this movie it's theory versus practice God damn you. I because love it so much. Tommy, Tommy Lee Jones is like the theoretical soldier who's teaching these people hypothetically how to kill their enemies. And Benicio is really the one out there who's having to do what Tommy Lee Jones is teaching. And so he's the one really getting damaged by what Tommy Lee Jones uh, is telling him to do. And so Tommy Lee Jones, LT, as Benicio calls him, um he's just sort of never has to think about the implications of what he's telling these people whereas benicio hallam is completely destroyed by the teachings of lt which i, I think is just a great way to approach the film and that's also why i was so much on um hallam's side over the course of this movie i was too but i don't i don't i i, I was definitely on benicio's side 
and Hallam side here, but I, I also don't think that, you know, you can't excuse, I mean, like, Bottom essentially, and he ignores. He kills him. a lot of innocent people. He kills a lot of innocent people. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, gee, he does kill. Well, I mean, he kills some people that are chasing after him. I wouldn't say that that's those people were innocent. Not entirely uh, innocent, but, uh, but he, he, he kind of kills of people who are also kind of brainwashed, like he is. Yes, and I think I think I think that it leads down a destructive path to the only one that can. I mean, it it is so. It's a little cliched. That's why this movie it rules because it's also very silly. Like this movie is this movie is silly too, and that but it's in a, it's silly in a great way. Like, oh, it's silly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like you got like the whole FBI stuff and everybody like running around. It's just like you guys are you guys are morons. Like clearly, this has to end with a giant knife fight on a cliff. Like, and his whole how... thing is like I don't use guns. I just kill people with knives. It's very kind of. You know, John Claude Van Damme a little bit. Yeah, but, it's very. It's almost like how are you creating? But it's played very, very straight. Yeah, how are you creating your own Batman with your own set of rules? And, and I've been Ryan. You know, I've been on this like eighties, nineties. I know you have. That's why. I, that's you know what's funny. I almost I, and this is no joke. All right, when I was done watching this movie, I almost texted you and I was like, "Okay, what trash movie should I watch after this?" Because. Yeah. This is a little bit more elevated than probably. Some it's of a John step Gordon. above yeah, that, above that because it's yeah. dealing with sort of human. It's dealing with the emotion. industrial complex, the, the yeah. manipulation. It has of, real of themes men, like, going yeah, on. It has ideas. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also just kind of a junkie thriller. Yeah. I mean, like, okay. There are many moments that when I laugh in this movie, it's a movie I laughed a lot too. Like, Again, I'm very sick. When Benicio I'm... is just sitting in the bedroom <laughs> and then he jumps off the roof, he yeah, like it's... jumps out like a cat, like out of the. You it's know, very the like John Woo or something. Yeah, it's very yeah, it's very just it's very sl- almost slapstick at times. Like you can way... see it in an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Yeah, yeah, like when he's in the car and he gets stuck because he's on the chase. Which I would say this is a really good chase scene. Just going to put that out there. Yes, um, I, I I agree with you. It's yeah. it's much lower rent than the stuff that we're used to, to seeing from him, but it's all about like getting around traffic jams and stuff, which I think is an interesting way to approach a chase that he's never really done before. Yeah, I mean, like I I feel like, but there's also this there's this sense of that. I mean, the back half of this movie does become a cat and mouse game between. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's so LT and, fugitive, and dude. Helm. I mean, so like, fugitive. but it's it's between these two people <laughs> that have only these. It's it's like what if Taken was going after Taken, right? These two yeah. people that have these particular set of skills. One the teacher, the it's other two the student. experts. Yeah, yeah, and as opposed like, to the fugitive, which is like, like two non experts. Yeah, when like fucking Tommy Lee Jones, like when he and in the first half of the film, like jumps on the ground and is like swimming in the marsh and the yeah. fucking dirt and like is tracking him and everything and you think and i thought at that moment right when he's like if you don't see me in two days you know you know i'm dead and i thought oh so we're just gonna be in the woods the whole time and then they like encounter each other within five minutes mm-hmm. i was like oh shit okay this movie is doing this, this movie kept subverting my expectations mm-hmm. throughout. And yeah, I think when it starts talking about, you know, obviously, you know, using how we use certain people as our weapons in our machines and we create yeah. these problems and how we discard just these people. people. Yeah, and just yeah. turn them into these just automatons. Yeah, for destruction. It, to me, Jay, was like, wow. This movie says a lot more than like it does. most most movies of its ilk usually do because it's like, oh yeah, maybe maybe they'll have a connection, but they wouldn't have like this this bond. Like you see the training sequences, right? And he's not training anyone. Those else. are crazy. There was he's a not, lot of research done for those training sequences, but he's not training anyone else. He's only really training him in those moments, or and it's a lot through his as, perspective. As far as the subjectivity of the yeah. film, yeah. yeah, yeah, and so. And Jones, it, but it it also feels like through the footage you see, and this is how I interpret it. I don't know how you felt. Jones is talking about it, but it is feeling like it's all through Del Toro's perspective. As the you know, it it feels like they're they're kind of they're interlocked, they're connected. 
Mm-hmm. And it then leads to, I got to say, one of the fucking gnarliest action sequences I've Final seen. Fights. Yeah. When, when the knife goes through the bicep. Yeah, that's crazy. I went, I went, I don't. I don't know why we don't do this more often. Like, what are we, like no action movies do this shit anymore? It's it's brutal. It is so good. But and this is freaking way. doing good over the top, where yeah. it's very effective. And I think it is the the leanness of this movie, where honestly he gets across the point that he was trying to make. Like I said earlier, he gets that point across far better in this film than he does in Rules of Engagement, which I think are kind of talking about similar things where it's about this objectivity of warfare and this idea of these people being inundated and turned into these tools of violence who can't really be manipulated once they've been trained. And then you have Tommy Lee Jones, LT, who's sort of just been absolved of any guilt that he thinks he may ought to be feeling for training these weapons really is what he's been doing. And he's indirectly responsible for so many deaths, but he can kind of live free of any guilt because he was again, that theorist rather than the practitioner. No, for sure. And I mean, there is one character. It is him grappling with like the nuclear bomb. He is Oppenheimer. And he's finally being confronted with the violence that he has wrought onto the world. I don't know if it's, it's okay. It is a micro version of that though. I mean, they're doing similar. He he, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't build the nuke, but he built, he built a killing machine. Yeah. He built a killing machine. I mean, uh, this army of killing machines. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot easier to ignore than it is for Oppenheimer, but at this particular point where this one guy, I think it's usually, I think it's actually, to be fair, I think it's a lot easier for him to ignore until he has to actually confront it. Well, like then his it assignment more is to, personal. Yeah, yeah, his assignment is to capture him. And when he does, he gets on a fucking plane and he goes back home. Like, he's done. Yeah. Like, he only once more people die and he's on the run again. Does he finally realize, like, no, this isn't simple. Like, then he actually has to grapple with it. But he's like, he's on the first flight back to where? Alaska? When, yeah. like, you know. Hanging and, out with his pet wolf. Is it okay? That <laughs> that wolf was very calm for that trap to be on him. Like, good for him to be. I, I, that was actually the, that was actually the first moment where I was like, "Oh, this movie's kind of junk." <laughs> I'm like, that wolf. This movie is elevated junk, which I love. Yeah, I love that kind of movie. It's I great, don't though. say that derogatorily. I, I honestly. Oh. No, I I truly mean that as a compliment. No. I, I think a movie that is willing to be junky in that way, but also have a lot on its mind, I think rocks. But I also think there there are some problems with this this movie. There's no, oh, it's not a perfect movie. No, no, no. no, no actually, no. I take it back. It's a perfect movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the 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 Connie Nielsen stuff is not particularly. It's it's all right. I'm going to disagree with you. It's just a on one point only. Okay, she looks unbelievable. <laughs> she important to you? She is an important person, <laughs> and we need to talk about her more. No, I just think that like, I think that they just that whole storyline just gets completely it does it gets thrown aside. away it's total that and feels honestly, like something that was lost on the cutting room floor a little bit totally, but it's also like. It's kind of good that it was because and I'm like, glad that this movie is 90 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm it, glad. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's like, it's like, it's the one time where you're like, yeah, this, this whole through line with these characters and any emotionality with like these, how, I mean, like if this movie wanted to take itself to another level, other than being like, like elevated trash, as we're kind of talking about it, then it would then have, let's not say trash. Let's okay. say drunk. Like there's a big fucking difference. <laughs> like, what are you? What are you measuring a different stick? I think there's a doing? difference between trash and junk. I think that ele- junk elevate- can be turned into something beautiful. Trash is trash. I mean, I don't see the difference. I think you're just using different 
See, Ryan, I'm in this words. I'm in this mindset of 80s and 90s trash, <laughs> which is just different than what this movie is. No, that's fair. I that's well, that's why it's elevated trash. Elevated trash, whereas just I'm watching trash. Yeah. Junk, I, I think it's like I junk I'm right. throwing out. You know, go in the trash. You might find you something. Think, you think trash is below junk? I mean, like, maybe. You go in the trash. I think junk might... is superior to trash. I mean, maybe you're right. But I don't know. Maybe it's a bad way to describe them both. Maybe it's just like. You're right. This might be the stupidest thing I've ever said on a podcast. I think this might be the dumbest argument we've ever had. But yeah. Um, between like the Oscar argument and this one. Um, is it. Oh, is that like a trash junk kind of thing that we were talking about earlier? Yeah. This uh, this episode. Is this episode trash or junk? Or junk. We'll leave it up to the listeners. Only, to only the listeners can decide. <laughs> can decide. <laughs> I think that's what they weakly think when they get on. Is this thing going to be trash or junk? And then we're just finally talking about it and getting we to the peak, point. We peak at junk. We peak sometimes at we're junk. trash. trash. Um, or we're trashy junk or junky trash. Then we One man's know. trash is another, another listener's junk. treasure. <laughs> I thought you were going to say another man's junk. But anyway. Um, but no, I think that the way in which her character um of abby and how these murders are how his destruction of what halm is doing to her people there and how that there seems to be like in the beginning of the movie when they first when her and jt or, or lt i'm sorry first meet they have this sort of meeting of like who are you and what's your backstory and how you're familiar with them and all the, that the fed and the cop yeah the, the fed and the, the cop the dichotomy you know the thing that you know the small town person versus this the, with the expert right mm-hmm. that we see it in all the time in this in this sort of genre and what i think this movie doesn't do and another movie that was coming to mind a little bit when i was watching this was uh nolan's insomnia uh, sure an, another movie that's I mean, it's not I, as I good as this. this. At, I think this is at least every bit as good as Insomnia and maybe better. No, this is this is better than Insomnia. Insomnia is boring. Nah. Uh, it's very it's not good. Actually, it's not. Yeah, it's the only thing that is devoid of Nolan's style in that movie. Um, oh, for sure. That's a gun for hire. Yeah. That's the only gun for hire Nolan movie. Yeah. And it's gross. Um, but this is a gun for hire freaking movie. But you can feel him all but over. But he it. just you you can feel him exactly. He's everywhere. He you can feel he, him more than blue chips. Yeah, I mean, like you can you can sense that he's made a couple of movies and he's been. I think you, you we were talking about the tenseness of working on something like Twelve Angry Men. Yeah, it is an uber cynical movie too, where it's like daring you to root for either of these people. Yeah, and then you look at Rules of Engagement, which is it's the gritty natures of those wars, of those action war sequences. It's almost like the last two things that he worked on, he kind of molded them together to create something here mm-hmm. and work on this. And but I do think that it does drop the ball there a little bit in terms of like trying to connect this to connect it all together and it essentially just disregards all these characters it kind of sets up to then just focus on the two main headliners and that that storyline is great enough it is i agree but i do think that by throwing and discarding that and then even the the whole backstory with Holm and the and the wife and or like the the girlfriend and the daughter and stuff like that i'm not sure there is like a dramatic masterpiece in this movie so i'm glad that it was made as lean as it no is. it no what i'm saying is it's like that's the thing that takes it from being like you know that's that's the little speed bumps in an otherwise yeah, no, really no, no, wild for sure, for sure. fun you know you know kind it's of like there's clearly stuff right. that but i mean it's again on the on the cutting room floor but it also you can justify it by saying that well they're gonna ignore it because this movie is is focused on the insanity of these two men colliding and that the rest of the world at this point like because once he goes in the woods this movie is only focused about those two guys and their outcome right. and we get that in ama- may i'm jay that sequence that final fight sequence is extraordinary i mean like, i think the fight towards the beginning is spectacular too where, where they're fighting each other is being super stealth and then yeah. uh, and then they have that big fight which i believe is the scene where Benicio broke his wrist 
Yeah. I think that was one of the last things they shot, you know, out of out of sequence. But I think that's where he broke his wrist and they had to delay shooting for six months. And Benicio was not happy about it. You know who probably wasn't happy about it? Tommy Lee Jones. Everybody. Probably Tommy. You know what? He actually had nothing but good things to say about Tommy Lee Jones. Really? Well, everybody usually does. I mean, he's a curmudgeon. He's a grump. He he is a grump. He is a grump. But I love. I feel like especially, you know, since around this movie, he's like, if he thinks he's on a crap project, he'll kind of let you know is he kind of retiring no because he was just what in that thing with jenna ortega right yeah i heard that thing's bad <laughs> yeah I, I, i've heard it's bad i guess he was also in the burial yeah good in the burial god he's good god jamie fox in the burial the burial is just like mm-hmm. just i would recommend that movie to anybody mm-hmm. it's a good it's movie. a good it, it's a good movie that is like 90s thrill you know like courtroom drama and it's fine exactly like, that it is, is. a I mean, T- jamie jamie fox in that movie is just out of this world that is a tnt classic if there ever was one like you know nine o'clock p.m saturday night put on the the barrels yeah. on tnt that's a cable yeah. classic right there yeah 15 years ago and ryan that's- i'll tell you this he made my atlanta critic circle ballot and we only nominate three people. Wait, he, for what? Best actor? For the oh, Jamie Foxx did. Jamie Foxx. Yeah, he oh, was I thought in my you top were talking three. about Tommy Lee Jones, and I'm like, Jay, what? How the fuck no. did he get nominated for Jamie Best Fox. Actor? No, he's like Jay was good, but he was no Jamie Foxx. No, Jamie Foxx is electric in that movie, though. I yeah. mean, you know, he had a weird year. He had um, a weird year. Dude, I don't I know. He yeah. comes back. You don't like Jamie Fox? Oh no, isn't he like kind of problem? Doesn't he have like problems or something? Like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. He's good in that movie. You know what? You know what? We're never gonna see that comedy that he directed. Ray Two. No, that that comedy. You know, NBA All Star Game movie. Yeah, we're never Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, where he's playing like a Mexican. And are we just never gonna see that? I don't think so. I think no. Is that in the Coyote versus Acme? tank see no i think people want to see coyote versus acne i don't think that anybody wants i think nobody in their right mind wants to release that movie but and it's also like does robert johnny jr do unironic blackface (laughs) i think it would be like like let's say if they released it like right now be very norbit for him well that movie was released it was filmed like five years ago right i want to say it was filmed like 10 years ago it feels like it feels like a long time ago let me see it let's see it (laughs) i don't understand why these streaming services are getting rid of movies like these there's a financial reason for it i mean they got plenty of accountants telling them why'd you make it in the fucking first place there what is going to happen after all this is they're going to start writing in actors contracts and stuff that they have to be released yeah or director's contracts i want to see that movie is it i mean sounds that's good that's what stinks is yeah the, will forte is sounds like a real sandy it sounds, birch right yeah it sounds like a really and uh her and james gunn came up with the story for it it sounds I mean, it's, really it sounds good and sounds i like, love i love, love a looney tune but I also I love like a obscure comedy. We don't get obscure comedies anymore. It, that's what it sounds like is like a kind of left of center weird comedy, like just kind of zany. Like because it's about very what, much. It's about what like Coyote suing Acne for all yeah, the bad like products that. Uh-huh. like that they've and it's done. Got the, right? It's got the live action animated Looney Tune combo. When was the last time we had one of those? It was Looney Tunes back in action. Right? Oh. Yeah, but I well, does Space Jam count? The new oh, I guess LeBron. Space Jam. Oh my God, son of a bitch! Oh, uh, so bad. But I meant like something that looked promising because that never looked that, that Looney Tunes back in action rocks. That movie's good. Yeah, Joe Dante, man. Yeah, it's that with Frazier. Yeah, didn't they have like another one before? There are uh, some sequences some... in Looney Tunes back in action that are elite. And they're funny. Yeah. You know, they were going to do that? a, they were going to, I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you another question, Jason, but what were you going to say real quick? I was just going to say about the other, you know, they were supposed to do a 
Space Jam with Tony Hawk. Yes. And then they were supposed to do one with uh, Tiger Woods. Well, I don't know if you can do that with Tiger anymore. Well, that was pre. Oh, is that pre all the prostitutes? That was early. Yes. Okay. <laughs> what? Am that I was, not? What? It's been out in the news. You're looking, was young, giving me a look that like was, you that can't was young, mention that. That was young Tiger. When it was all secret? Yes. It was probably the NC-17 version of that or whatever. Did you watch that um, Tiger Woods documentary on HBO? No. I don't watch any of these. You watch all the sports documentaries. I don't. I do. The Tiger one's interesting. I mean, I kind of... I'm not learning anything new from a Tiger Woods documentary. Nah, you'll learn some interesting stuff. I what, would recommend like, the Tiger Woods. Like what? What club his wife used to beat his ass when she found out the news? Yeah, it was a five iron. <laughs> Tony Hawk would be that would be a stupid movie. Uh, yeah, he he doesn't exactly have the charisma of a movie star. Although Tiger doesn't really either. Remember when? Remember at the Oscars a couple of years ago when they had when they were celebrating James Bond and they brought Christian, what is it? Uh, Christian Slater. No, Sean White, Sean you know, White. And, uh, uh, was it Tony was Hawk? It? Tony Hawk. Yeah. they brought all these guys I up. Think there those were and, the three. Yeah. Those are the sports guys. Right. And when I think of James Bond, I think of it. three douchebags. I think of Tony Hawk um, landing that 900. <laughs> I think of like, I yeah. don't even think they're like annoying by themselves. No, but so. I don't think of three American dumbasses no. that I would think you have would never. Up, I don't think of like I Sean think you would White. Up their surviving bonds. Every time I think of Sean White, I think of I, I've been drinking a lot of drinks on uh, and when that interview where he's like I where he was like nineteen or whatever. He's like I oh, yeah, well, he was I, like and I got I got free drinks and they were like well, aren't you nineteen? And it was like yeah, I'm talking about, about Mountain Dew, baby. Mountain Dew, baby. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, that but was like I always wasn't, so, wasn't he in Europe? I think. Yeah, or he was doing. I think it was yeah with CNN or somebody. But anyway, I don't know. Yeah, but he was in Europe. It's it's legal. Yeah, but I mean, I thought that was true. I think he was probably doing more than just drinking. You know what I mean, so, Ryan? You're making assumptions. I'm making assumptions. I know I shouldn't. When it, you know, athletes don't do that. I'm sure that's that's the least thing that's probably scandalous. You know what happens at those Olympic you know places they're all you know what i gotta be honest i don't know from firsthand experience you don't I've know that man been, i've never been an olympian no i know but you hear the stories you know you know what goes on a lot of testosterone it's pent up they don't got a lot of things to do i'm just gonna what? talk about i'm just here to talk Playing about ping the pong they, they i'm have just here to talk tournaments. about the hunted yeah i'm sure mm, are you sure you want to talk about it we haven't talked about anything else except the hunted today that no, that's true. But until we got on this little tangent, that's for sure. Um, no, but I was going to ask you: Did you read that article recently about uh, like somebody over in the UK saying that we should get rid of the Muppets, like retire the Muppets? Excuse me. <laughs> Are the Muppets problematic now? No, it was just it was just like they're tired of like every time we try to reboot them, it doesn't work out, and we should just let them die. Well, there, it's like a Valvillian. Okay, this is an interesting it. take. It, 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 there is a take where you say the Muppets are outdated and cannot be revitalized to their, you know, premier days. Yeah. I love the Muppets. Yeah. And I think it is like possible a, to bring them back to their glory days. I think you, I think you do it organically, kind of like how the movie did in like 2011. I thought the Seagull movie was quite good. I thought it was very good. That movie makes me cry every time. I thought it's the sequel film. was. I mean, I'd love the Muppets. Where did this come from? We talked about like the hunted. The, I think it was like. <laughs> well, we were talking about Looney. Tunes. Went from the Olympics to the Muppets. We were talking about Looney Tunes. So was, uh, Looney so, Tunes to yeah, the Olympics yeah. to the Muppets so, in our hunted episode. Um, who do you think? No, would I mean be, the, the Muppets. Who from the uh, uh, Muppets would you think would be the Tommy Lee Jones and the uh, Benicio of the Muppets? Oh man. I mean, Tommy Lee, you got to go with either Statler or Waldorf. Pick one. Yeah. <laughs> and then Benicio, I think Sweet. just as far as a survivalist, I think you go Rizzo. Oh, okay. I think that guy is a survivor. That's pretty good. That is what that guy is. Yeah. Rizzo versus Statler. Holy shit. I would watch that. Too. <laughs> no, I was thinking more like, uh, what's his face? The Eagle? Sam the Eagle? Sam I think the Eagle is, as Tommy Lee Jones. Right? I could see that. 
and then I was thinking, um, that's good. That's good. Actually. Yeah. That's actually really good. And then, yeah, I was thinking somebody like really manic as, as, uh, as Del Toro. I mean, so you I could thinking, see Gonzo. I was going to say Gonzo, like Sam and Gonzo. That would Callum. be, that's top billing. That's really good shit. And I think then, that'd be good. Sam, the Eagle versus Gonzo. Yeah. A little bit would of you, a Freddy versus Jason situation. Would you watch that movie? I think I you would. Watch that movie. I would watch times the out of shit out of that movie. <laughs> can't. I, I, I don't know. What do you get for that? Uh, I think the, can I, can I just tell you this about the John movie? Wick two crew on that one? Yeah. Good chance to Helsky to make it. Yeah. Um, Helsky on there. I think that like, can we go back to the training sequences and talk about, yeah, there's about the horrifying. Um, like you know what terrifies me more in movies with, with movies like this or any kind of like recruitment hypothetical video? violence yeah hypothetical violence is the the creation of um like how they create these weapons theory versus practice my man yeah. i'm telling I you it's, i think it's absolutely terrifying the creation of these knives specifically these these like sort of these like serrated knives it's it's they they yeah it's it, it's grisly by nature in their design and then they're treating their enemies like freaking turkeys. It's, well, it's they're, wild. They're treating it like <laughs> the way Tommy Lee Jones is describing how to stab a man is. Yeah, you're right. Turkey carving is one. There's a lot of slices. It was a lot like watching like when, uh, you know, in like games in New York, when like Daniel Day Lewis is explaining with like the slab of meat, like where he would yeah. stab. It's like it was like watching that. It's it was like artisanal murder. Yeah, it's like. And, but they're doing it in, like the way Jones is describing it to Del Toro and the group. It's very nonchalant. Like this is yeah. where you're gonna do it. This is how you're gonna. Bing, oh, bing, it's bing, entirely bing. yeah, un unemotional. Yeah, it's like it's uh, totally apathetic. And it's it it's like it's like doing a fucking mechanical. Uh, yeah, it's it's like doing an exercise, like literally exercises. Mm -hmm. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, and then it's a lot release. of cutting artery and muscle. Is, yeah, it's a lot it of like no, but it's also knowing precisely mm -hmm. where to hit in order so that you can dismember. And it's so fast, and it's like cut, 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 stab. Yeah, but the cut, way that cut, like stab, cut, cut. But the way that like then you see it in practice early in the film, like it's it's like a horror movie. Well, it is kind of funny that they do all of that precision, and then at the end of the day, really what. Benicio is doing is throwing knives through people's necks. <laughs> right? It's not. I understand that he is the very martial weapon, arts. Yeah, but he's the the precision is in the single strike kills, not as much the, you know, the the, the real carving that we we see in the in the training sequences. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know. Like, I would. <laughs> it's 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 kind of the the violence is for the most part up until uh i think the end it's 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 real silly shit there's some there's some shots during the chase that are really they're really fucking funny okay like yeah we're talking about the junkie parts of it which are i mean that 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 sequence where the the fake hunters are trying to get at him yeah. and then he's like i'm here he's like and i don't even have a gun and then he's yeah. throwing knives to people's necks and, <laughs> and then he's like and he's like you're gonna be quicker than that and, and he, he's like, he you'll never catch me he <laughs> brutally murders them he is like <laughs> disemboweling them cutting off limbs cutting off heads i know he, it was like watching an evil dead movie it, it turned like, into Holy saw shit. yeah yeah <laughs> it was like fuck no the, he's half jason Bourne, half jigsaw yeah <laughs> you know it was uh jigsaw born there you go um uh, but no, I was so the the scenes that made me laugh the most was when he's on foot and Lee, and Tommy Lee Jones is on foot with him. The scene where Tommy Lee Jones is like running by and he's like looking for him, right? And then he looks out and there's like the, I guess like this park area and there's like a wall and he's like right underneath the wall or whatever and all he has is like a like a like a like a a cloak yes. or something over him and then like tommy Lee jones is like ah fuck it he's not here and then like and then like benicio just jumps out of it like oh and then and then like the next scene cuts to like all of a sudden a different location but benicio's on a bike fuck uh, fucking fucking I, made me laugh so hard i love that scene where they they pull the silence of the lambs trick a little bit where he thinks benicio is on the other side of the waterfall oh it's so good 
I think that's really good. I love that's a, that. That's good visual. It's honestly, it's a hard thing to do because that Silence of the Lambs scene where she's at the door, and then the like FBI guys, CIA guys are are also. Oh, you're there. talking about like you're talking about like the fake out, the fake out, the huge yeah, huge fake out, which which in so many circumstances is so cheap and works so well there. <laughs> I would say in this film, they're doing a similar thing. It doesn't work quite as well, but I, I found it effective. No, no, no. Uh, I thought it was great. Would you think, would, do you think Friedkin, <laughs> if we told Friedkin this movie was junky fun, do you think he would like that? I think he'd be I don't really, think I think, so. I think he'd be I think really he'd be pissed off. I think he's, well, yeah, I think he'd be really pissed off. I think he'd be like, why are you even laughing at this? Uh, but then he also See, might I don't like, know that I, I don't know that I but laughed then I, at it. But I don't think he'd give a shit. I don't know. Maybe there would be like, he doesn't like ass kissers. Like that's no, what Re- that's that's what like doesn't. Reffin did. Like Reffin kissed his ass, and then he like no Reffin but, kissed his own ass. Yeah, and that was the problem. They did a little bit of both, to be fair. Yeah, but I think I think like I don't know if you got to know him, you could probably joke with him about it a little bit. I mean, you can't, but like if you would, I imagine to know he's him. got a sense of humor, but he also, you know, takes his art very seriously i think that i think he's i mean i think he's very precious I can't imagine he took like a movie like blue chips super serious no i think he 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 obviously revered his the ones that made him like sorcerer you hear the way he talked about like the exorcist right before he died french connection right very like, important emotional experiences like cruising him. like these movies that he put a lot mm-hmm. of effort into it i think these later movies i think if he if you talk to him and if you went up, like if if he was alive and you were able to go up to him, it's like, hey, I just want to let you know, the the hunted is a movie I watch all the time. As just like I need, like some, like non thinking. Yeah, I bet he would know, acknowledge ser- like serious fun. This is a lean again, like a lean action movie. Yeah, I mean, it's like not I, The Exorcist. No, it's not. But and I, I do. But think it is visceral. It's a. It's very movie. visceral, but it's also very well put together too. In all, in the way, I think it's. it's I think it's thoughtful. It's, yeah, like I don't think he just like the action sequences are too fucking good for him not to, for him to just phone it in. Thoughtfulness. It's good, yeah, man. It's and I mean he's he's got he doesn't have his hands on the script. It's David Griffith, Peter Griffith, and 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 Art. Monticello, Monticelloria or whatever. This was written and by Peter Griffin. Peter Griffith, the Griffiths. guy from Family Guy. No, all right. See here you go. See how you see how you see you're. I think he. I think he wouldn't like you. You got a little smart mouth, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> he would have liked me. You know. You know what? Who Caleb Deschanel, the cinematographer on this movie. Uh-huh. Um, Did he shoot this movie? Yeah. Yeah, I mean this movie looks great. You know Caleb Deschanel. He, he's you know he's um he's been nominated like a bunch of times. Yeah, right stuff. The Natural, Fly Away Home, The Patriot, Never Look Away, Passion of the Christ, six noms. Yeah, he's, he's done, no Zoe, but well, yeah. I mean he um <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, uh, all right, touche, <laughs> touche. <laughs> he did being there. Uh, what other movies did he do? Uh, National Treasure. You love that movie. Um, and he worked with him on Killer Joe, which we'll talk about in a couple of weeks. Yeah. You know, he also shot one of the worst looking movies of all of all time. Uh, John Favreau's The Lion King. Yeah. yeah. I know he's still doing stuff. I couldn't remember still, what he did recently. Yeah. Well, he's, uh, I mean, Lion King's the last film he did. He did some additional work with hoita on ad astra dang he's been demoted to junior cinematographer well i mean when hoita's there yeah hoita we've decided he is the goat hoita's the man and when he wins an oscar this year he will be the reigning champion because i just think about i think about oppie i think about nope ad astra you know Dad Astra, I like to call it. But anyway, this is a um, this is a good movie. You got anything else you want to say or talk about it, real quick? I don't know. I almost it's it's, it's, it's kind, kind of, of a lean. hard movie to talk about because it is so lean and just kind of it's such an experience. It's such an experience. I mean, if you want to talk about, 
I just thought I, I just can't get that last. 15. I freaking love when Benicio del Toro forges a machete out of a fire in the woods. <laughs> I mean, that rocks. I think that like the way that they just prepare their tools again and yeah, for the exactly. final sequence is exactly it's just fucking great. It's like in but then freaking he's got a great score in this movie, by the way, by Brian Tyler. And then he just decides, I'm going to cut the score, and it's just going to be the wilderness and the sounds. That the is the cuts, thing about that final sequence. The no score is so effective. The you cuts, are right about that. I'm glad you mentioned that. The cuts are are the are what we're what we need to hear. We need to hear the 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 serrated knives going into the flesh, like you know, it's 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 to bring the point home. But it's it's uh, for me it's to it, it's it's super effective and yeah i mean it, it oh just wild smart choice it feels very smart like how old was he when he made this like he had to be like in his 60s right Ooh, freaking about, yeah he had to be what yeah he would have right, been in his uh, right about, about to the 60s six sixty 60 ish yeah no not. actually mid mid 60s probably no <laughs> probably right at right at 60 okay it's fucking gnarly and then a movie like this comes from a guy like that he's got he's got good juice in this thing yeah i mean Mm -hmm. i'll tell you just like a good piece of dialogue is when tommy lee jones says you have to answer for what you've done and then benicio just says i have to live with what i've done oh so good that's the punishment it's good the part where uh the little girl is playing hide and seek in the airport and lt like gives her hints and stuff just like he can't help himself he's the ultimate tracker just good shorthand for great at his job or just like obsessed with his job. Really? It's, I don't know. It's good stuff. It is a, it, it just never stops being entertaining. It is, as I have said in many episodes, propulsive is what this movie is. And it is lean at 90 minutes. And again, that cutting out the score sort of speaks to that documentarian style, which is, just really great stuff. I love it. I think it's great. Yeah, I mean, like, I love where he's living. I love the little like. Uh, I love the. I love British when he, Columbia, like where he's living, living. Yeah, like where, where. Yeah, where he living in the snow. From, up in the snow. Yeah. I thought for half a second there was going to be like when Tommy Lee Jones kind of like looks and he's just looking at the dog. I thought for a half second, Connie Nelson was going to like show up, like take him up on his offer or whatever kind of wrap it up you know give him a big old smooch i gotta tell you this you know what i was thinking about a lot when i was watching this movie i was like this is what taylor sheridan thinks he writes but it's never yeah. as biting it's or it's never as the good. thing the thing is taylor sheridan has a lot of good stuff he's yeah, but, done some bad stuff but he's not but he's not like i don't know there's an argument that at this point sheridan there's, is underrated but there's not enough commentary in his material sicario has some stuff yeah but we talked about that it does not have as nearly as no effective or biting material as something even like this he did hell or high water right yeah but there's that's nothing got, re- that's got not, some not, stuff but i think that's fairly obvious stuff yeah it's very obvious like this is not this isn't but like this doesn't super this, deep but like this is like i don't know right. like this it, feels it, like it's a it's a matter of it's it's the the difference is it doesn't this subtle, doesn't feel forced. subtle but not a ton or a ton but not subtle correct That's the difference between sheridan and this this Dalton. isn't forced his stuff feels forced does that make sense like a little bit of it's like i think a lot of Sheridan. i want to be in this style that i am creating rather than i've created this style i don't want to disparage sicario i think I don't, sicario is great no i like that movie a lot. i think sicario is better than this movie yeah just from a yeah. filmmaking standpoint it's like from a immaculate. from a filmmaking yeah but i love the i love that this i love that it embraces that it's nothing more than what it is and i agree with that i love that about and, it that's and I maybe think my that, favorite thing about and it that but is, that puts that puts a ceiling on it yeah but it doesn't but its ceiling is that of other movies that try not to take the i mean it almost feels weirdly of its own kind like it's trying to not be this it's 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 going by its own rules because that's usually what freaking does. And, and also it doesn't have Roger Deakins, which hurts. 
yeah, that's that's for sure. But I mean, like Deschanel does a good job. But yeah, he's Sicario not. Sicario is like one of the great looking movies of the last. It is, but like it, fifteen years. But we we had that conversation where we're like, you know, how much is there? How much there is there? Right. Yeah, but then that's kind of what I'm saying with this movie a little bit is like this superficially, this movie is immaculate and there is some there there's more than there's more stuff there than this movie requires, but it's not citizen Kane, right? Yeah, no, I mean, not that it needs to be, and I'm glad it isn't striving to be that. And like we've talked about, I think there's a lot of stuff that is striving for more thematic depth that was, just done away with that was just cut left on the cutting room floor but i appreciate i think that was a good decision yeah no i no i agree i mean you can feel like there's a little bit of some stuff cut here but i don't think there was any meat left on this bone though. no that's what's so good about it there's but just I think no it, fat on it whatsoever no but that's the good thing it's like yes i'm saying you, you had a good meal did you have a good meal this was a great it's meal a great meal it was healthy well, it was healthy. Is it one of those where you're like, it's deceivingly healthy? No, it was fried chicken. You're right. Yeah, it's like, well, maybe you had like a grilled chicken. Well, maybe for- Killer Joe is more fried chicken. I was gonna- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one's definitely a bucket of Kentucky fried chicken. Um, but- uh, I think you mean K fried C. K fried K fried C. Yeah, because they didn't have the rights, right? Yeah. Um, but. Can I say one thing though that made me laugh really hard, and then we can we can sort of transition yeah. in here. Uh, when they're climbing up the the um, on the bridge, and Tommy Lee Jones feels like he's been climbing for like twenty minutes, and Benicio just gets right up to the top. He's like, "You know what? Fucking, I'm out of here!" And <laughs> just jumps off. Yep. <laughs> and then they're but they're all shooting at him. Like as Tommy Lee Jones is running, out, they're just shooting. And then all of a sudden, like halfway up there, he's like, they're like, hey, wait a minute. Stop shooting. Hold your fire. It's like, yeah, you could have fucking killed him, you morons. Yeah, like, they got some stormtroopers uh, yeah, they had, shooting those guns. That's the other thing. I was like, wow, these are some real, like, these are really guys working for There's the Empire. Here. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, no. There's a, just, I'm telling you, I had a blast watching this. I, was, I think this is a really good movie. Yeah. I'm liking it the more we're talking about it, to be fair. Like I, I, I I'm not saying it's I top agree. tier. It's kinda like I'm not saying it's in the top tier, but I'm saying like it's gonna be in that middle ground when we do our rankings where I'm like, that movie that movie gets a lot more credit for the thing the thing about the Friedkin, right which I think we've discovered, is there's a top tier and there's a pretty significant drop off to the second tier. Has kind of been my impression. I don't know if you feel that way. But there's his big run, and then there's to live and die in L.A., and then there's everything else. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, like, everything else is not really good, is it? There, there's a lot of mediocre stuff in there. And this is not mediocre. This is good. But it's nowhere close to that 70s run. Yeah. No. I mean, well, that 70s run is But is that's what unfair. I mean, that, that's, that's, yeah, that's unfair. unfair to him. That's unfair to him. Yeah, so that's a high bar to cross. Yeah. Anything else you want to say, Jay? Um, no. Okay. Connie Nielsen looks incredible. She's an important person. <laughs> she is. She's incredible. She's she's great in the movie. Um, in her five minutes of screen time, she's great. Yeah, she's she's really good. Um, mm-hmm. okay, Jay. Yes. Before we get out of here. We're going to test your award season knowledge based on the film we just reviewed, which is The Hunted. Yes. In a segment we like to call it's an honor to get nominated. Jay, what Oscars were the was The Hunted nominated for? I mean, this is this is Oscar bait through and through. <laughs> so I need to think long and hard about this. Yes. Uh, I'm going to guess this was nominated for zero Oscars. Jay. Did you look this up? You know, I didn't even look it up. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, you're right, buddy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, no Oscars for this. Is that sad? 
Well, I need to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look at it here. Okay, so this is the, this is the, two thousand and four Oscars. If you're gonna, <laughs> depends on how you look at it. <laughs> well, when you Google it, it's that's how it's gonna be. Uh -huh. And about the seventy six, which is the year. This this is a big year. You know what won Best Picture? Uh, this was. Oh my God! What won Best Picture this year? I'm even looking at the movies and I can't figure it out. That would be a little movie called Lord of the Rings: The Return of the King. Oh yes, this was the Lord of the Rings year. Yeah, I like this movie more than Lord of the Rings: Return of the King. Oh, what skirt? <laughs> Jay. <sighs> You can't do that. You you know that's wrong, and you have been saying for years that you need to rewatch the Lord of the Rings. Rewatch the Lord of the Rings films in a long time. Like what? Would you say like fifteen years? Yeah, since high school for sure. Yeah, at least fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. I will say this. Shout out to our good friend and um, our associate editor Sophia Simonell. She mm -hmm. had not seen them in a long, long time. Probably like twenty years, fifteen, twenty years, like yourself. Mm -hmm. She just went a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Back to back to back weekends mm -hmm. with her sister, saw them each on the extended editions on the big screen. Loved them. Yeah, I I need I need to watch them again. I mean, I, I'm I'm fairly confident I will like them if I watch them again. But you think if I it also if I, makes me not want to watch them again. If I came all the way to Georgia, uh -huh. would you watch them? Yeah. Really? I own them. Do you own the extended? But or just then the, the other part is. Like if you're here, do we just want to sit in my basement and watch movies all weekend? No. I mean, that's, I mean, that's kind of what we, what we would want to do. It's like our thing. I mean, we'd want to see like a big movie in a theater maybe, but we, we would want to hang out. Let's run out of theater and let's watch them. Okay. Let's rent out a theater and watch all of them. Yeah. Executively. That actually maybe, sounds kind of awesome. Or maybe we just do a series and we just do Peter Jackson. What's your, what's your favorite movie this year? Is that your favorite movie this year? of um 2003 no what is it something's gotta give something's gotta give is your favorite movie of this year i watch that movie all the time wow nancy i sw i swerved there didn't i see mm -hmm. and it's an against the grind pick though i though you know me love me some pirates of the caribbean curse love of black pearl movie. i think love mine's me kill bill volume one love me some kill bill volume one Love me some Master and Commander, the far side of the world. Mm -hmm. Love me Lord of the Rings. I, I I really do like Old Boy, Lost in Translation. Translation. You know, I love you know movie. Uh, I love. Where are you at on In the Cut? You know, I haven't watched In the Cut in a long, I freaking long time. Love In the Cut. Oh my god, I, it's so good. I like Nemo. Love Nemo. Nemo's good. People shit on Nemo, and you know, at least you can get the fuck out of here. Um. Mystic River is really good until the five last five minutes. Anger management. <laughs> Cat for, in the hat. Are you being for now? Now, see, you're just doing oh, this. A bit. Is the year the even Stevens movie came out. I like Big Fish. I'm, League I'm of not, Extraordinary Gentlemen. It's not as bad as people think it is. Oh, um, hot yeah. take. Hot take. I, hey, what? Uh, I've actually read those graphic novels. Would it make a good limited series? you think or like a tv show yeah they could make a great thing out of those yeah jay what are your thoughts on the last samurai i haven't seen it you haven't seen the last samurai yeah you freaking nail me on all, all these i always am the uh, one that's busting you on, on i'm not trying to do it to you buddy no i know but i'm like what am I? yeah ryan but have you seen <laughs> you know what's the peck and paw movie you always tell me i should watch the Ballad of Cable Hogue? No, not that one. Oh, uh, Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia? There you go. Yeah, masterpiece. Honestly, I'd watch that with you if I if I went to see. Yeah, I think that's his best movie. When do we ever let each other down? Honestly, like I I, I want to like I, because this whole question. episode is based off of the idea that I recommended that we watch this one. When have we ever let each other down in a recommendation over as the far as movie series six, seven, are concerned? Six seven never. years that we've done shows together. That we've been uh, friends. That's a good question. I mean, I, I I think my greatest achievement and recommendation is Mishima. 
Well, I think well, I think your greatest thing was was turning me into a David Lynch fan. David, yes, because yeah. you weren't in the um um Alan Pressburger. No, James. How about James Cameron? Yeah. You were, well, absolute, you were you were you were an absolute hater. To be fair, when we did the old show over at Incision Film, you were terrified of doing that series. I was because I think I, I thought it was a bit. It was not a bit. It but you turned on the bit. It's, you abandoned the bit. It's not about abandoning the bit. It's about actually sitting down and watching the films and actually and I, I I acknowledge that now. And that's why I think this Lord of the Rings thing is you were point. very you know what there is an argument that the lord of the rings thing is half a bit yeah a little bit just because i refuse to watch them again yeah I think that's how that. i feel right now but i just refuse to watch them again yeah but i, I think need, that the, i need to watch i them. think you need to get the fuck over that and just well, I, need, I need to watch them but i have a one-year-old and those movies are four hours long now with the extended cuts i think that that's that's just excuse making you're watching fucking jade like you can you can you can you can pop on one of them. I'm not Jade's a, day, Jade's Jade's a crisp hour 40, my man. Yeah, but so is the first disc. Like you could break it up. I'm like, not breaking up Lord of the Rings if I'm rewatching him. I'm you're gonna watch no all of them in a row? Like, not all of them, but one okay. movie I'm doing in one sitting. Okay. Well, I, I mean, just upgraded my audio downstairs. Oh, really? Got the nice Dolby set up down here. How big's your TV? Um, uh my TV's like a 65 down here. Have you Quick question. Uh huh. You ever thought about projector? Well, or, so or would Allie kill you for that? No, I mean it's not that. I um, you not have the wall space. I I could install a projector if I wanted to. Just I grew up with a projector, mm. and you know what the most expensive part that was always breaking was was the freaking bowl. Yeah. And that bulb hot, was like right? that bulb is like seven hundred bucks. So you might as well just buy a new TV while you're at that. Giant yeah, TV. I mean yeah. It, it's like a couple bulbs is a you know nice is a, TV is like an OLED. TVs are the only thing that are the only thing that is beating inflation. They're going down in price. It's they really uh, are. It's interesting. You can buy, you know, not an elite TV, but a a, a really really good tv pretty big tv for like you can buy it for 700 bucks yeah and that's nothing that's a drop in the bucket a a big really nice tv and you know i'm trying to get that you know right we watch a lot of movies you know oh, we do we're, we're, we're yeah. trying to we're trying to get after it yeah and i might actually be due for a new tv soon we'll see but uh t- I know. TVs are you know not not crazy crazy I tell you this: If I bought a new TV, you know what would happen? My wife would, yeah, my wife would kill me. That's that's what. Mm. But I always okay, buy them on the set. I don't want you. I don't want you to die. I want to keep doing the podcast. I know, buddy, but you know, I see a good deal. I'm not going to say no. That's a good point. You know, I never sometimes, buy them. I never buy them. A deal is worth death. Yeah. Hey, save a little change. You can use it on the casket. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Uh, but no, I think uh, I, I always get them on a good deal. Yeah, I don't know. You can get a, you can get a TV for the Best Buy on no speaking terms right now. I tell you about the time I um, broke my like three month old TV. I would like to. This is a great story to end the podcast. This is a good aside. So, yeah. it's the one in my bedroom. I I bought it. It was at the time the nicest TV in our house. Mm-hmm. I don't know where you stand on TVs in the bedroom. Some people are very anti. Hmm. We used to have one, but we never used it. Yeah, we use it. We uh, we so when we okay. Side note for you, and then I'll get back to your story. Uh-huh. Uh So you asked. Technically, it's your fault. I, um, I did. Well, this is totally valid. First apartment we were in, we had the television in, in the bedroom, and it was the one that we actually watched the most in there, because we had like the that was where we had the the fire mm-hmm, stick, mm-hmm. and then when I upgraded the sound and uh, the TV in the living room. When we moved into the the apartment we were in before the house, we spent most of the time in the living room. And now we spend most of the time in the living room because when you're in a house, you spend it mostly in your living yeah, room. Yeah, you spend time in the living room. Yeah, for My sure. other, t- I have two TVs in this house: mm-hmm. the big one in the living room, and then 
the one that I I replaced that I the one in my living room is my new Sony 4K that I replaced uh, my OLED that's actually just it got it, it fucked up a little bit anyway um, and so, but I put that one in my office so it's right over here actually to, to mm-hmm. next to me and now and I'll watch movies in here uh, when the wife wants to watch something in the other room or this, people this are is the screening room. yeah this is where this is where I this is where the magic happens this is where I was. For all you, this is uh, who, Ryan, for anyone that loved, you watch your Ryan movies. This was where I. Well, no, I watch my Ryan movies wherever I want in this house. Uh, you know, I, I pay the mortgage. Hell yeah! Uh, but um, <laughs> see how far that gets me. But no, I mean, I do watch most of my stuff out there. But I like to, yeah. If she wants to watch a TV show that I'm not like in the mood for, I will be nice and I will give her that the living room and I because I have the 4K. Uh, sony blu-ray player in here and mm-hmm. i'll put on usually the movies i'm doing for this show um if, are in here yeah mm-hmm. so work work is in here um yeah. i don't know where your situation's at anyway back to your story yes so this tv nicest tv in the house we bought it about three months ago i one day was just like all right i was you know like just fake super excited to go to bed i was like man i'm so excited to go to bed right now i'm gonna jump in the bed and i'm gonna rip the sheets off and i ripped the comforter off and the remote was on top of the comforter and like a spear the remote just crashed into the tv so pointedly and just cracked you saw that like spider web effect on the tv and um i was in trouble and we had to buy a new tv which was not ideal um yeah we've got we've got too many tvs in this house but you know it is what it is i uh, well, it's a good movie what happened was is the the oled over here it it got uh spotting mm. you, know, you know what i'm talking about where, it, oh, yeah. where image spotting or whatever where it like you know attaches because you had like something paused or whatever yeah yeah so i learned when you yeah, got video games paused with a 4k tv don't leave it for too long just you know what i got um if you're gonna play what? the game play the game if not turn the fucking thing off you know what we got we got one of those frames you know mm. the frame mm. got one of those overpriced yeah i thought the old it was overpriced but you know what i gotta tell you the sony perfect i mean the frame the frame is very nice but oh my god it is expensive and then it doesn't come with the freaking frame like a good freaking frame you got to buy your own frame and those things are like proprietized proprietary so you got to get a whole frame which is another few hundred bucks it's crazy it's nuts anyway looks good though looks good the hunted anyway, good movie anyway hunted very good movie mm-hmm. jay can you tell everybody where they can find you and all your work my friend yeah, you can find me online at uh, Mr. J Ledbetter on Twitter, Letterboxd, J Ledbetter. Any work I'm doing, just uh, over at Awards Watch. I'll be on the Awards Watch Bane podcast here soon, so check that out. Well, you may have already and, been on and you, by the time this is released. Oh, that's true. That's true. Talking some but, uh, some dunage? Some dunage. All, about, of our, uh, all of our listeners out there, that's where we're going to do our... Director watch Dune conversation. Dune yeah. 2 since it's coming yeah. out. So so check that out. Yeah, that, I think that will have already happened. Yeah. And I think we're talking about something that has been in the past. Out. Yeah. Love time stamping a recording. Um <laughs> I will I will my recommendation for the week. I rewatched Good Time. Freaking banger. The Safety Brothers film. The Safety Brothers film, Good Time. Not the uh, television show. Oh, that's Good Times. I'm sorry. Yes. No, I did not watch Good Times. I watched Good Time, which I think is one of Robert Pattinson's greatest performances. I think that is just such a energetic, again, kind of like we were talking about with uh, with The Hunted, although I think this is even to a different level, just tonally unique, just a great vibes movie and a great thematic movie with great performances, Pattinson rules in it. Go watch Good Time. It's on Netflix. Check it out. It's a good movie. I like good time. Um, mm-hmm. It's good. Uh, you can find me on. I'm sad, actually, by the way, that the Safties aren't working together anymore. It's a little. I know. It's all sad. 
Um, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Letterbox, or Ryan McQuaid 77. You can find all my work here at awardswatch.com. If you like podcasts, uh, the Awards Watch podcast is uh, delivered to your ears every Monday. The show, of course, is released every Thursday. iTunes, Spotify, five star reviews. We'd greatly appreciate them. We don't want to see any one stars. No or one two stars. stars. All five stars, folks. Yeah. Five and stars. also, Come just on. like, go do it. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. We'd love you if you do it. We give you a shout out future yeah, episode maybe we'll start reading reviews well the good ones we're only gonna read the good ones no the bad ones only no i'm not no i don't want to confront the bad ones um also over on the website wordswatch.com go ahead and sign up for the newsletter that's where you can get all reviews interviews uh these wonderful podcasts and more news word stuff you got it it's over there you can get it sent to you twice a week eric puts it together and you greatly appreciate it recommendation from me I think it's a movie Jay's never seen, or at least he hasn't logged in on Letterbox. I mean, apparently I haven't seen any movies based on the things you asked a, me about. I watched a, a a film classic I hadn't seen it in a long, long time, and uh, and it's uh, a Best Picture winner. Got to get in the right mode since it's Oscar mm-hmm. season. Uh, I watched uh, Joseph Driving Mankiewicz. Daisy. Joseph, Joseph Mankiewicz is uh, all about Eve. All about Eve. Psh, haven't seen it. I knew you were gonna say it. I knew it. Own it. I yeah. own it. You own that. Uh, you own that criterion. I haven't seen it. I own the criterion. I haven't seen uh, it. Wonderful film. A uh, great film of talking about the the industry. I mean, I can understand why Todd Haynes is obsessed with this movie because it feels very much coded within uh, mostly all of his movies. Um, it's like a really interesting film. I I think with you know the parallels between this and Sunset Boulevard, two movies that came out sort of right around the same time, talking about the industry, talking about, um, uh, you know an actress's time uh stardom uh in the industry uh just a really great piece of inside baseball obviously if you know you know joseph mankiewicz is Herman yeah. hashtag mankiewicz not, my mank. not my mank uh but like it's interesting to see him make a movie like this and it's got these great performances in the movie especially the you know ann baxter and, and betty davis are incredible jay i think you would love it i think it's it's also very it's a i very, agree with you it's a very, cyni- it? very cynical little movie. Um, mm, not and, for me. And while, <laughs> while also being extremely entertaining and, and having a one of the greatest scripts ever made. No, I need that. I'm, I'm, my goal this year is to just like dig into my criterions, the ones that I haven't watched. I, just I pulled them. I pulled about 25 off the shelf and I'm starting to watch them this month. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something like that after well, I get through my 80s and 90s trash. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and you're, you got helped a lot because you added a bunch to your shelf recently. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and, you know, after I get to executive decision, I'll watch all about you. How about that? <laughs> uh, wait, is the executive decision on the one where Kurt Russell, Kurt on, the Russell plane? on the plane? Yep. That movie rules. I know. That I haven't seen it yet. I need to watch it. Oh, God. Oh, my Love God. Kurt Russell. Yeah. Uh, shout out to executive decision and all about you. You've never been yeah. used in the same sentence before. Um, well, that's going to do it. For this week's episode of Director Watch, we will be back next week. Uh, we're going to be talking about a little movie called Bug. Bug, yeah. it's getting under your skin next week. So thank you all so much for listening, and we'll see you all next time.